Okay, this morning, you have a copy of the scriptures that I plan to be using for our thought today. Simple question, and the purpose of this message is that we may be able to be what the Lord wants us to be, a witness for Him, but that we may be able to tell one how to get to heaven. And our message simply is, which way to heaven? We try to make it complicated, don't we? Acts chapter 16. We have the record. Paul and Silas had been imprisoned and had been beaten because of the testimony for the Lord. They're in jail when our text takes place. In jail, their backs are bleeding and what have you, where they've been beaten. And look what happened, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. What's those guys doing? We beat up and got locked up in chains. Well, listen to that. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. The keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, my friend, for we're all here. Then the jailer called for light, sprang in, and came trembling, and he fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do? to be saved? That's a question that everyone ought to ask in life, isn't it? The answer, and they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you might be, if you live good enough, now what it says is it? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and maybe, and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. Pretty simple, isn't it? Have you ever asked someone directions to a certain place and they answered something like this? Well, go to the first stop sign on the street up the way there and take a right, go about three blocks, maybe six blocks, and then a right up left and then go four blocks and if you get to an Exxon station you've gone too far you ever had directions given to you similar to that I have confusing to say the least then you ask another and say how do you get over to the Johnson's house the fellow said I'm headed that way follow me I'll take you there. And our day, if somebody asks us how to get to some place, we say go to Google Maps, don't we? GPS. I saw on the news a couple weeks ago where there was a family that did that. And Google Maps messed up and they wound up, these people wound up in the desert in Arizona because the Google had, that, or the GPS had given them the wrong directions. Folk, when you get talking about getting to heaven, you can get the wrong directions. And we need to always remember that. But if someone this morning were to ask you the way to heaven, would you be able to tell them? 
to some places, and a fellow might say, well, I don't know of a place around here with that name. Would you say, I'm not very good on directions, ask someone else. Or, I heard a preacher on TV say that you should turn right and go straight. But then I heard maybe he really didn't know the way. Way back in the 80s, I was listening to Jimmy Swaggart, who's still on TV, by the way. He said, I know that it, through Jesus Christ you get there, to heaven. But before thousands of people, maybe millions, because he had a, t a strong TV program, that's before his fall. But then he turned around and said, you still got to live it to get there. Did y'all read anything about living it a moment ago? You, when I said that, it said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's saying it's how good he lives that gets you to heaven. That's a devil's lie. Right. Jesus didn't pay part of the price. He paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, and he makes me white as snow. Oh, our Lord shed his precious blood that we might be saved. We don't have a thing to do with it as far as our works. If you or anyone else, if I included, tell someone it's how good you live that's going to get you to heaven, then that's a devil's lie. There's still a lot of branches of so-called Christianity that teach that doctrine. And it's either right or it's wrong. And I can tell you, if you go by what our Lord teaches us, it's wrong. The devil's lie. Someone may say, well, I don't really know how to tell you, but let me ask my Sunday school teacher or my preacher Here's his address or phone number. Call him and let him tell you. Or would you say, here's my map. Let me show you what it says. Here's what our map, our soul winners go out and they use these scriptures much of the time. Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have a common friend that's up here this week to work on the air conditioner. And Brother Enrique shared with him the gospel. And the man left here a different person. Brother Enrique led him to the Lord. He prayed the sinner's prayer. because he cared enough to share with him about the Lord. 
The question is, among all of us, could we show a lost traveler the way? Be like the fellow that said, I'm headed that way, follow me. Well, a little story. I'll share with you all. I'm going to read it verbatim. I could try to attempt to, but, but this way you, you'll get the whole gist. During Thomas Jefferson's presidency, and he was the third president of the United States, which would have been in 1801, he became president, and he served two four-year terms. So this happened during his time, right after 1801. But he and a group of travelers arrived at a river crossing where the swift river had overflowed its banks. There they found a man with a, without a horse waiting at the edge of the river, afraid to cross on his own. The president's traveling party began to cross horseback, one by one, each fighting the water for his life. And the lone traveler watched the group traverse the treacherous river and then asked President Jefferson to take him across. The president agreed without hesitation. The men climbed into the back of the president's horse and the two made it safely to the other side of the river. Where somebody asked the man, why did you ask the president to help you? The man was shocked and admitted he had no idea it was the president of the United States who had carried him safely across. All I know, he said, is that on some of your faces was written the answer, that face says no. But on some of them the answer was yes. And his was a yes face. So I asked him. When he looked on his face and saw the peace, And the president gave him a ride because of what he saw in his face. Yes, faces are carved in stone, but nobody will remember the no faces. <laughs> well, would you be the person that said, hey, I'll help you across the river. Would you say, I'm headed to heaven? Come go with me. Jesus himself was asked the way. What did he say? Go join a church? No. He said, I'm the way. Truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is not one of the ways. He is the way. He wrote the map, didn't he? And he said he is the door of the sheepfold. No man can enter in. But we read, just read a moment ago about the jailer that asked Paul and Silas. They were in jail until at midnight they were singing praises to the Lord. The jailer must have thought, man, they had a bunch of drink. You know, but we should never forget who we are and where we're headed. We're here temporarily. There's an old song that says, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Never forget that we're pilgrims looking for, as Abraham said, a city 
whose builder and ruler is God. And folks, that's what we've got to look forward to. That's why the Christian ought to be the happiest person on earth. Because we're going to get to live with him forever. But at midnight these fellows were singing and an earthquake came and shook the prison doors and the jailer asked someone. He brought Paul and Silas out and he said, fellas, what must I do to have what you have? What must I do to be saved? said, well, they didn't say, well, here, let me, let me baptize you. Baptism doesn't do it, does it? A person should be baptized, but because they are saved, not in order to be saved. But this jailer saw something different in their life. I'd ask you a question. Does your neighbor... When they see you, do they see the love you have for God by your faithfulness? Or they see you driving around in circles? Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thy shalt be saved. He didn't say to do good works. But I can tell you this much. You ask the average person what you got to do to get to heaven. I pulled it up on Google last night and I said, which way to heaven? GPS out of curiosity to see what it said. And boy, they gave a bunch of places people to reference. But it all comes back to Jesus, doesn't it? But we, as, as Christians, as children of God, the Lord calls on us to show the way. The church is God's lighthouse. When Jesus was here, he said, I'm the light of the world. But then as he was about to depart, he said to the church, ye are the light of the world. We're the world's hope for being saved. That being true, how important is it to do what the Lord called the church to do. And that's to go to win souls for the Christ. We should make the directions to heaven plain, even for little children. We should make it clear and plain. Christians are headed to the place we call heaven which means above. I have not seen, ears not heard what the place of heaven is like. Some call it the celestial city. But that's where we as God's children, not because we deserve it, but because of what he did, are headed. The world is headed to destruction. Folk, when you pick up a newspaper or cut the news on, always tragedy. I stepped up here a moment ago and I, my phone was, did a little click on it and I flipped, clicked on it. And there's a fellow that, a uh, football player that I used to think was one of the greatest, played for UT. Killed on a motorcycle, I guess this morning. Cedric Benson, that was a running back for University of Texas, and went on into the pros. 
35 years old, just lost his life. The folk, that's, that's his life. You pick up a newspaper and you see all that's going on and uh, wonder where we're headed. The world itself is headed again to destruction. You and I are headed to that city. The fair city, which is not far over the way. And folk, if you're here this morning and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and folk, that's the thing you need to do in order to be with the Lord. I'm going to call upon you to do that this morning. If you've never made peace with our Lord, then you do that today.